In this short video, I'm going to give you a rundown of how to use the PowerPoint version of the Dashboard Wireframe Kit 2nd Edition. So let's get started right away. My name is Nicholas Kelly. When you open the template, this is what you're going to see. The very first thing is the title slide. You'll skip down and you'll see the steps included in the process where you can use this template. So it really is important to start your dashboard the right way. And usually when we build dashboards, we kind of just jump into development. What we need to do in order to be successful is take a series of steps beforehand. And these steps are all encapsulated in this template. So you'll see on the third slide in the process and sequence of steps that you're gonna follow using all these slides in this template. So starting from a high level, we're going to use the dashboard strategy template slide. That's basically who's this for? What are the goals? How are we going to measure success? What are the data sources? All those good things. High level. We really need it. It's very important. I would not build a dashboard without doing that first step. The next one is identifying who the personas are, what their goals and challenges um, in relation to dashboard and dashboards and reporting and data. From there, once we've gotten the vision from the stakeholders, so a high level set of goals, we're going to figure out who our end users are, our end user personas. So this template, very similar to the stakeholder template, it's going to tell us a little bit about their background, what their challenges are and their goals. Usually when I'm doing these two, I'm sitting with the stakeholders are the end users uh, respectively and filling these templates out with them in partnership. Next slide is step four, defining the questions. So out of the conversation we had with the end users and hopefully those end users, their goals are aligned to the goals of the stakeholders. We then start figuring out what questions that we need to be able to answer. And in that, we're also going to assess what actions are those questions driving. From there, we're going to move into taking all those questions and prioritizing them and giving them a score. More on that later when we look at the slide, but basically what we're going to end up with from this section is a set of questions that are prioritized for the current iteration. So what is in scope based on our prioritization? And then we're going to group those questions into logical themes or categories that are going to form our tabs, the tabs on our dashboard. Now from there, we're going to take each group of questions that are grouped by a tab and we're going to start to visualize them. We're going to run them through a little quick process that's going to help us identify per, per question what chart or charts are needed, what KPI or KPIs are needed, as well as the filters that are required to deeply understand that specific question and the action it's driving. Now from there, we're going to take our, as we go through all of our questions in that, we're going to start populating them into our dashboard layouts you usually just pick one type of layout for your dashboard. We're going to look at those, but basically you'll start copying and pasting your visualizations from this visualization tab and um, slide into your different layouts. And finally, the last section here is where you can pull all your visualizations from. So the, the slides at the end of this deck are all the visualization types. You just basically copy and paste them in to where you need them. So with that being said, let's just carry on onto the dashboard strategy template. So if this is confusing, you haven't used it before, there's an example slide here where you can go through the details. Just some high level cliff notes on this of some things to be aware of. Of course, we need a name. We need an objective for the dashboard. Why are we doing it? Why does it exist? What measurable value it's driving? This is crucial, often hard to get to, but it is crucial. We have to do this. One big reason why dashboards fail is because we don't know how we're going to measure success. We have some uh, vitally important information that we should know who the business owner is, who the data owner is, who our stakeholders are. Sometimes we know how many end users we're going to have. Sometimes we don't put in what you know. We'll often not know how many personas we're designing for. So there's some of these areas that you're going to fill out over time, not right away. And then we might know who's doing the development. If there are any analysts involved, the technology we're building in this example, Power BI, what are our data sources? a super high level pass at what the data assessment is for those data sources. Super high level. We're not looking for any kind of specificity. The point of this is really to align the stakeholders and the, the, the project leads in identifying the basic data sources and what kind of shape they're in. A guess at the number of tabs. Again, one of these things we might not know. Any permissions that are needed. 
All right, so this in this example, it's a sales dashboard, so the sales team needs read access. Some dates around when we're going to release various iterations, the change impact that this, this dashboard is going to have. Now, of course, it's super light, but it is so much better than not thinking about change impact at all. And we can see some impacts here. Uh, an important outcome of this specific type of strategy template is the high level questions we're trying to tackle. This is going to help us inform what data we're going to need to pull. High level, we don't need to get specific. Five is plenty at this stage. Moving on from that, we have the next slide for our stakeholders, our personas. Now you can see in all of these slides, or most of these slides, we're gonna have like an example, right? So you can have an example you can pull around. You it will invariably end up copying and pasting this. Right, so it's just easy to easy to use, right? And it, each one of these has an example. So, what's a background? What's a role background of your your stakeholder? So look at this. We have our, our CHRO. I'm just giving an example here. So Chief HR Officer. Um, in this example, they they lead the HR organization. Sure, you could put in another one. You could put in another detail. You know, 20 plus years experience. This is the kind of stuff we're looking for in these, right? So you just copy and paste these in. This is important because when you have someone who's developing the dashboard who's not involved in this process, they can look back at this and understand who this is for, at least who the stakeholder is. Uh, similarly, with the challenges, you just copy and paste those as needed. Uh, I limit these to six because I don't want more than six. We need to six most important, our uh, most difficult challenges and the six most important goals. Again, this has an example. Here's a challenge for the chief HR officer, no single source of truth. We have a goal, and again, copy paste as needed. And this goal is showing reduced the voluntary resignations by 10% in the current financial year. That's a great goal, it's measurable, and it's contained in a time, constrained by time. Now, similarly, we have a slide here and a template for the user persona. You may have several user personas. So copy and paste this as needed, right? So if I just copy and paste that, I can have several uh, personas. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete that for now but copy and paste as needed. Same thing. Now in this example, the role is a little bit different uh, because it's a HR manager. So in the example I'm sh saying is responsible for a single department. And uh, their challenge is a lot of manual effort to create weekly reports. Now what we should notice here is that the challenge is more granular for the end user than it is for the stakeholder. Stakeholder should be slightly more high level, more strategic. The goal uh, in this example, hire more quality candidates. Now again, copy and paste as needed. What we want to see here is alignment between the goals of the user persona and the goals of the stakeholder persona. There should be some degree of alignment there. This is a really big reason why dashboards fail. From there, we're going to take those two personas, or more, however many you have, and start to identify what questions that you have that are aligned to those goals. So what questions do we need to start answer, asking ourselves? Okay, so here's an example. How many employees resigned in the past month, right? That's aligned to those previous goals. Now, a great piece that's going to help us cut away a lot of chart junk, a lot of low value uh, information in this dashboard is very early on to identify what action it drives. So what question is, uh, what's the purpose of this question? What action does it drive? In this example, find out if there's one primary cause for the resignation. So that's an example, right? I can just copy, paste, and do this as many times as needed. And you can see I can just directly edit, just double click and edit. So it's very, very easy, very straightforward to be able to do this. Okay, so that's our questions. You fill all that up as much as you need. You may have more than 21 questions, in which case copy and paste this template and keep, keep uh, continuing to put more questions on it. The next slide is the prioritization. So you basically take your questions from the previous slide stack them all up here just put them on top of each other what i like to do is just I'll select them all and then you can just arrange right and uh, align align center and then we align vertically right, so it's just going to make them all on top of one each other then you take one question bring it over here to prioritize it so you just follow the steps one two three one two three four five six so for this question we want to see if what goals it's aligned to. So what goals is this aligned to? So I'm going to go back. I've got a stakeholder goal and that it's I know it's aligned to. 
Okay, so another important step, right? So whatever goals they are aligned to, if you have nothing, you have a problem. Okay, if you don't have goals here, you have a problem. Don't bother continuing with your dashboard. It's it's less likely to succeed. So this is a, an important step in making sure that for this question, it is aligned to certain goals. Okay, so just a quick sanity check to make sure. For this question that's currently up, then we do an assessment on it. And this scoring is across four categories. Data issues, zero if there's none. Two, if there's a lot. And you can see the scorings up here. Level of effort, zero, which means none, no effort. Fi uh, fiscal cost or financial cost, there's zero or low. And business value is high. So we like this type of question. So I can just go in, edit. Okay, well, you know what? There is some cost to it. Um, and the data quality is not perfect. Okay, fine. That's acceptable. What I'm going to do is I agree with the project team. Yeah, we're putting that into the current iteration. Great. Now I peel off the next question. And we do that. We do that again, I might say no data issues, and the values two, and that's great, we like that. So that's gonna go in into our stack for the current iteration. We might find there's another question, and we'd say lots of data issues, lots of effort, high cost, no value, so what's the point? So there's no purpose in doing that, we'll just put it in the parking lot. So you do that until you've emptied out your question stack. Now, from there, you take your current iteration questions and you start grouping them by tab. So I might say, you know, these two questions are related to recruitment. So I'm going to put them there together. And so you end up populating them um, until you have all your questions populated and grouped in a tab. If you have more than six tabs, it's a bit of a problem. Potentially, you might want to look at who you're designing for in your personas. Are you designing for too many people? Um, are we just asking too many questions? Is it is it valuable enough? So there's a few things you can look at there just to make sure. From there, we're going to take each group. So I'm going to take this stack for a tab. So I'm going to do this per tab, this next, next activity. I'm going to take a stack and we're going to go on to the next slide. I've got my stack here. I just, just say I pasted it in and I do the same thing, right? I'm going to say, okay, well, this for the current question, I'm going to pick which chart makes the most sense. So the question you have here goes up here. So you just paste it in. Okay, so we, we know what we're looking at now. You know, it just so happens um, I like this chart for this question, but Let's say you wanted a different chart. Okay, so you go down here, pick the chart that you like, copy, paste it in. Now, we might need to have, you know, a few charts to answer a specific question. Um, and since this is HR, more often than not, we're probably going to have some sort of table where we want to see the row level details of an employee. So, I'm thinking there. And same thing then, right? We're following a set of steps based off what the user wants to see, it's important to be able to capture the inputs from the user here because they may have a preference, an existing preference for a chart type. And we, we don't necessarily always need to put in a best practice visualization because there may be a user preference. And for me, usually a user preference overrides best practice initially. Over time, we want to get to a best practice. We have our KPI. So is there a key performance indicator needed to answer this question? Usually there should be. Um, again, again, we have a few types here. So you have a uh, various types of KPI, a very simple one, you know, change as needed, right? So maybe it's not a dollar, maybe it's a percent, maybe it's no, just a number, right? But you know, you change as needed and um, you can adjust all of these, they're all editable, right? So it's all, it's all very flexible. So that's the, the value of having it in PowerPoint, right? You can easily edit these, you can easily share these with colleagues. You do the same thing for your filters. Um, you know, I generally don't like having more than four filters. You know, so for example, with department, right? So we want to we want to put in the details that we can, and that's the beauty of doing this in PowerPoint. It's very very fast, right? So we can just give an example here. So I can just say, you know, sales department, marketing department, etc. Right? Um, might do region, right? And then you give it examples of region. So you know, North North America, Europe, for example. 
Like, it could give a lot more than that. From here, you're going to take your visualizations. So let's just take this one. And um, you can fill, fill in the details as needed. Right? You can do your X and Y axes. Yeah, it's all editable, right? So it's very fast to do all of this. I'm going to copy this. And I like this template. I like the operation layout max. And I'm just going to start dropping the visualizations we picked in there. Okay, so, right, and we keep doing that until we've populated the whole thing with everything that we needed. Okay, now you're going to do this several times, of course, right? So, I've got those. Then, what I would do, okay, I'm done with those. Now, you could copy this whole slide if you wanted to, right? Um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to go, okay, next question. Uh, bring that to the front. I'm on to my next question. Then I would go pick the visuals that work for that. So let's just say, uh, you know, I filled in, I fill this in, you know, and just say, you know, uh, you put in your details here. Then I'm done with this question and I go and I paste that in. Okay, so I do this until I have a tab that answers all the questions that I need. We may find that there's more charts and visuals that are that can fit in here. So there's two things. Um, one thing is, do we really need that many to answer the questions on that tab? Maybe, in which case we need to split it out into more tabs. So just bear in mind, there is a, a strategic type of layout and that does afford the space to actually type in the questions that you had in here and the actions that it's driving, which is nice when you're sharing it with people. And same here with the operation layout, you can see there's a bit less space. We're only using four charts and four KPIs, whereas this layout up here foregoes the questions and actions on the left and who it's designed for um, in, in order to replace it with more visualizations. So you really just pick which one you want. Then you have all your chart types down here that you can pick from, uh, all the different visualization types. And um, that's basically the end of the templates. So if you need to jump into this quick, just look at this, familiarize, familiarize yourself with this. You, you would use this template on a per project basis. So just copy this whole file and then you know copy the slides as needed um, and rinse and repeat so you can do this as often as you like. So that is the PowerPoint version of the Dashboard Wireframe Kit 2nd Edition. I hope you enjoy it.